Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope everyone is having a great day. If this is your first time seeing me, my name is Charlotte and today I'm gonna to teach you guys how to knit a coin purse. I've seen a lot of tutorials on how to crochet a coin purse. I haven't seen very many on how to knit one. So that's what this video is going to be about today. Um, if you hear lots of traffic, you might hear traffic, you might hear trains, you might hear planes, you might hear a rooster every now and again. It is such a nice day and everyone is just out and enjoying the day. So sorry if it's like a little, I don't know, bothersome to hear all those noises in the background, but hey, it is what it is. But anyway, back to today's video, I am making kind of two videos at once. I am making this video, teaching you guys how to make a coin purse. And then for my members only, I'm making a behind the scenes of me actually like, you know, doing, working the boring rows because, uh, and just talking about a bunch of nothing. So if you guys want to check out my members only, there's it's somewhere on my main page. If you go to my main channel, it'll say memberships. You can sign up there if you want to. You don't have to. No big deal. But today's video, back to it, coin purses. I'm going to show you everything you need to make a coin purse. And everything I used will be in the description below. There'll be links to it if you want to check those out, if you want to make your own. And so, yeah. So the first thing you're going to need is yarn. This here was a nightmare. If you are a member, you will see the nightmare I had with this. But it is the Big Twist Gentle. It is a bulky yarn and it calls for a 5.5 millimeter needle and we're not using that size. So I'm going to go over that in a little bit. The color is charcoal, but I would really just call it gray. Um, yeah, so that's what we're using for yarn today. This one here it's the same brand, the Big Twist brand, but I think it's the color Orchid. And this was the color like Sage, I believe. So you need yarn. That's the first thing you need. Now we're gonna use some only some four millimeter knitting needles. These are double pointed needles and you don't need anything bigger than double pointed needles because this is not a very big project. So we need some double pointed needles and some yarn and then you're gonna need a yarn needle, nothing fancy, nothing special. You're gonna need one of these. This is a kiss clasp. And again, the link will be in the description below. This is the frustrating part. This part, it took some learning. I'm not really good at sewing. I will tell you that now, I'm not good at sewing. I don't really enjoy sewing, but this isn't so bad after you do it a couple times. But at first it was a little challenging. Then you're going to need some sort of sewing kit or needle and thread, but the thread's gotta be a little thick because, well, it's gotta be a little durable. So I bought this kit off Amazon. Again, a link will be in the description below. It's actually a really good kit and it was not that expensive at all. And you get a lot of stuff. So you get a lot of needles, you get a lot of nice thread and it's thick thread. So that's good, bunch of different colors. You get a thimble, you get a measuring tape, you get all kinds of good stuff. So you're gonna need that. And scissors, of course, but this little kit has, has these scissors. So yeah, I like those. Okay. So yeah, the little kit has everything. Again, description or the link will be in the description below the video if you wanna check it out for yourself. Again, something more you'll need is some clips or some straight pins. Um, they're not absolutely necessary, but I find them easier. It's easier if you have some sort of clips. I bought these back when I was going to start quilting, and I did. I quilted for a, a bit. I made a quilt. I made one quilt. I was like, you know what? That's, that's probably good enough. I think, I think one quilt is good enough. But you'll need some sort of clips or straight pins, something like that, just to make your life easier. They're, like I said, they're not necessary absolutely necessary but you will thank me and then you're gonna need like a pen and a piece of paper just to write down you know the rows you're on so what we're going to do to get started this is where we get started we are gonna start knitting now we want a really long tail we want to first we want to do a long tail cast on of 18 so if you want to write this down you, there's not much to write down I promise you want to cast on 18 stitches but you wanna leave a really long tail. So, because we're gonna use this end to sew in our sides, to seam up our sides. So, I like to take a good amount just to make sure that I have enough to sew with, um, and then some more for my long tail. 
So I keep hitting the camera, so I do apologize. <laughs> but you make your slip knot, and then you're gonna do a long tail cast on of 18 stitches. So slip knot counts as one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen. So we have our eighteen stitches and we have a very long tail left. Now, another good thing about those little clips that I was telling you, or you know, you guys can do anything you want, but I like to wrap up this long tail because it gets in the way. And then I take one of these clips and I just kind of clip it so it's kind of out of my way. And now we're ready to knit. Now, rows one and two, all you're gonna do is knit both of those rows. You're just gonna knit all the stitches for both rows one and two. So that's pretty easy. So we're just gonna Go ahead and knit all these stitches. So if you wanna write on your piece of paper, row one, knit, row two, knit. And those are just our setup rows. And after this gets a little bit longer, you can kinda of get rid, I'm gonna get rid of my little clippy here. It's just when I'm first starting out, I don't wanna confuse that tail with working yarn because if you've ever done that, you know that's a pain, a pain in the butt. So we're just going to go ahead and knit all 18 stitches for row one. And then that's our row one and we're going to do the same thing for row two. Row two is just knit all the stitches. So we're gonna go back around. Remember, we're using a very small needle. And the reason for that is we want the stitch to be kind of tight, um, a little sturdy, more sturdy, more tight. So that's why I'm using smaller needles for such a big yarn. I have not tried it with a worsted weight yarn, a four, size four yarn. Um, Another thing I do want to try, but I haven't, I don't have any cotton. Cotton yarn would probably be the best to use because it's probably more sturdy. Um, but if you just want like a cute little decorative, you know, coin purse, you know, put your lipstick in or, you know, anything you want that'll fit. You don't have to put coins in it. A lot of people don't even use like real money anymore. So, but there we go. Okay. We've knit our first two rows. Now, now it's gonna start on the pattern. So this, on your piece of paper, you can write cast on 18 stitches, row one knit, row two knit, and then you can put pattern. And you're gonna work 30 or 60, hold on, let me see how many, 60 rows of the pattern. So I what I've been doing is, so I don't lose count of what row I'm on, is I write the pattern, and the pattern is going to be, if you wanna write this down, it's going to be knit two. So knit two, and then in parentheses, you're gonna put knit one, knit one below, and then end your parentheses. And then you're gonna repeat that all the way to the end until you have two stitches left, and then you're gonna knit the last two stitches. So if I can figure out how to write that on the screen for you, I will do that, but I'm not very techy, so probably won't, but I will try. Um, so yeah, so it's knit two, make your parentheses, knit one, comma, knit one below, end your parentheses, and then in, do that, repeat that until the very end until you have two stitches left, and then you'll knit two. And that row you are going to repeat for 60 rows. So that will be row one of the pattern. And you wanna do that 60 times in total. So let's do that. Knit two, one and two, 
and then knit one, knit one below. And knit one below is, let's see, right, there's a hole right there. Stab it in, knit one below. This is the Fisherman's Rib pattern. I did a video on this a few weeks ago. So if you've seen that, maybe you've tried it, but uh, maybe it was like a week ago. But yeah, it's just knit one, knit one in the row below, or not row below, knit one below. Might be the row below, I don't know. And you're gonna do this until you have two stitches left on your needle. And you will always end, before you get to your two stitches, you'll always end on a knit below. And then knit two one and two. And you're going to repeat that for a total of 60, 60 rows. So that was row one of the pattern. So like I said, I like to have a little piece of paper next to me. I did row one, now I'm gonna put on a number two. I'm gonna do the same thing for number two all the way till I get to 60. And then after I do that, cause I'm gonna make this with you guys, um, we'll do one more row together. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna pause this and I'll pick back up when I'm at my end of my 60 rows. So again, we start out by knit two, one and two, and then knit one, and then knit below, knit one below. Knit one, knit one below, 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 and that will be the last one before we get to our last two, which are just gonna be two knit stitches. So there we go. That was a row two. So I'm gonna go over here to my little piece of paper. I'm gonna check off row two and then put row three. And I'm gonna do that 60 times. And when I have finished with my 60th row, I will come back and show you guys what to do next. So give me a few, well, it's gonna take me a long time, but it'll be like that for you guys. Okay, and that is 60 rows. Now, after you get your 60 rows knit, you wanna make sure that your working yarn and your tail yarn are on the same side. As long as your working yarn and your tail yarn is on the same side, we are good. So after you knit your 60 rows, you're going to finish off with two rows of knit. So I'm gonna do that here on camera. I'm just gonna go ahead and knit two rows. So. You might hear the wind chimes in the background. They're kind of loud. It got really windy outside. So I find it calming and relaxing, but sorry if it is kind of annoying to some of you. I'm just gonna try to hurry up here and knit these last two rows. Okay, one more, and then we're going to bind off. And then it'll be time to do the fun part. This wasn't even the fun part. The fun part will be sewing up the sides and then attaching our kiss clasp. So, yeah. And that, that is the fun part. If you've never done it, I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but me personally, the first time that I had sewn on a kiss clasp, I was very frustrated <laughs> because it did not work out properly and I'm just not good at sewing. And so, yeah, I'm really, I'm not good at sewing at all. So, okay, we did our two rows of knit. 
So now we want to bind off. Again, we wanna make sure that our working yarn is on the same side as our tail yarn. When we bind off, that way we'll have our working yarn over here. We're gonna leave a really long tail so we have the yarn we need for both sides to be sewn up. Okay, so now we're going to bind off. So we're just gonna bind off, I mean like normal, I think this is what you would consider normal. You're gonna knit two, and then you're gonna take that first stitch that you knit, and you're gonna slide it over the last stitch that you knit. And then you're gonna knit one more, and then you're gonna slide that one off, knit one more, then you're gonna slide that one off, and you're gonna do that all the way till the end. So, I mean, it's only 18 stitches, so it doesn't take too long. And you don't want it to be too tight, but you don't want it to be too loose either. So you're bind off. So it took me way longer than I thought it would to finish knitting this little sample here, or not a sample, it's gonna be a, an actual physically completed project. So it's not a sample. It just took me a while to knit it. So now it's like dark and it's going to rain and it's windy. So I don't know. And I'm tired. So I talk a lot when I'm tired, but I don't make sense when I, when I, when I am tired and I talk. So just pay no attention. We're going to get through this. A lot of planes. Can you hear the planes? It is very noisy where I live. Between the planes and the wind. I'm surprised I haven't heard a train yet. Okay. Last one. Okay. And you just want to like pull up a little bit. I'm gonna get those scissors out. We're gonna cut a pretty decently, I mean, pretty decent long tail. So try to grab just enough. You just wanna make sure you have enough to sew with and that should be plenty. I would rather have, oh, did these like break? Oh no, oh, okay, okay. Um, I would rather have too much than not enough. So just make sure you give yourself a decent amount of yarn to sew with. And then all I do is I take my needle out of my loop, my, yeah, the loop, and I pull that yarn through and then I just kind of pull it tight. Okay, so now we are stuck, not stuck, we are left with this. We have our tail. Okay. Now it's time for the fun part. What you're gonna do is you're gonna fold it up like this. And you're gonna take this tail here. I'm gonna bring it a little bit close. Now again, remember, I have already claimed that I am not good at sewing. This is why I do not like to weave in my ends. This is why I do not like sewing, period. Especially hand by hand. With a sewing machine, I can do that, but I hate sewing by hand, but that's okay. We're gonna get through it. We have our working yarn, or we have our, our needle here our little yarn needle. We're gonna fold that up and then you're just gonna find this very first little, I call them like little notches. They look like little like nubs. That's where we turned, there's little nubs. So we're just gonna go through that top one. Our yarn's here in the back. We're gonna go through that top little nub. And we're gonna pull our yarn through. So now they're kind of connected. So now going from the inside to the outside, see the nubs, these little nubs, that's what I call them. Again, you can do this any way you like. I like this way. I just went under the nub, the nub, on the opposite side of where I just went into, and I'm gonna pull. Now I'm gonna go to the nub across from it. I don't know what you call those, but that's what I'm calling it. And then I'm going down to the next one, and I'm gonna go underneath it and pull my yarn through. I'm gonna go across from that, all working from the inside. Again, I'm gonna go there. 
and then we're gonna go across from it and we're just gonna do this all the way till we get to the bottom and it's I mean it's not hard at all and because I have you know landmarks of these nubs here is what I'm calling them I kind of know where I'm going so just go back and forth until we get to the bottom. So in total, I will also write the pattern in the description below, if that helps, if I can't get it on screen, because again, I'm not really, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to put it on the screen. Like I said, I'm doing this from my phone, so I don't have much I mean, I'm sure there's probably editing apps that I could use, but I'm not. So we're just gonna do it this way. I'll put the, the pattern, I'll write it out in the description below the video. And we're just gonna take our time. I'm taking my time and I'm sewing this. And I'm just going under the nubs. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nothing ever has to be perfect. I don't know why. Who invented perfect? Because we're definitely not born thinking things have to be perfect. So I don't know where it came from, but it doesn't have to be perfect. I struggled for a really long time thinking everything had to be perfect, but it doesn't. Okay, I'm just, now I'm just rambling on about nothing. I'll just sit here. <laughs> We are almost done with this side, but we're gonna do the other side too. Actually, I'll do the other side. I'll start the other side, but I'll finish it. And then I'll come back. I don't wanna bore you. <laughs> People, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of the same way. I lose interest like very quickly when things don't go fast enough. But what we wanna do is just sew up this. We are almost done. And then we have the very bottom here, I go down through that one on the left or on the right, up through the one on the right or the left, left, right, you know, whatever. And then I just kind of, I don't knot it. I don't do anything. I just kind of leave it. And then what we're going to do is we're, when we turn it, it looks like that on the side. Now we're going to do the same thing over on this side. So I will get that one started and show you. And then the fun, fun part the clasp. Oh yes, looking forward to it. This yarn is, I don't know, it's very stringy. Okay, same thing. We have our sides folded together. We're gonna find the first little nub. We're gonna go into the first nub. Now we're just gonna go across, find the first nub across, Go underneath and pull through. And then we're gonna come back to this side, all from the middle, and just go underneath the little nubs. I don't know, that's how I've been doing it and that's how it's been working, so I'm not gonna try to mess with it. So we'll see how fast I can do this side. Maybe I won't. And again, it does not have to be perfect. I wanna try making one of these with cotton yarn, but because some cotton, I mean, cotton yarn's pretty, I mean, it's a lot thinner than this, so I probably have to change like the stitch count, I'm guessing, I don't know. If you guys, you guys should experiment with your own different yarns, different size needles. And then if you try it, I would love to see what you guys created. I used to have a Facebook page. I don't know what happened to it. I can't gain access to it anymore. So I can't really get on there anymore.
I have my own private group, but again, I don't have access to it. Like I'm an admin on that group, knit, crochet, and crafts, but I don't have access to it to uh, make, you know, changes or anything like that. So I don't know. Okay, so now we have that. We're not gonna tie a knot or anything. So now it's just like this. Now we're gonna turn it inside out. Like so. Then I just like to take these strings here, wrap them around my finger, and shove them inside for right now. So now that's what we have. Now we're gonna grab this pretty thing and open it up. Like so. And what you're gonna do is you wanna find, this is where clips come in handy because this is very finicky when you're starting and trying to get it all lined up. What I like to do is I like to line up my seam that I've sewn with the actual hinge right here in the middle. And I like to take my clips and I just clip it on there so the seam is lined up with the center. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side, keeping it on the inside. See how it's kind of on the inside? Okay, so we're gonna take, here's the center seam where we have sewn it up. I'm gonna take a clip and just clip that to the whole thing. And then all we're gonna do is I go around and this part can take a while just to get because the more time you take with getting this all nice and neat and tucked in it makes the sewing go a lot easier so what I like to do is take these little clips and I kind of just like push push the yarn <laughs> see you guys I'm not gonna be very good at showing this but I'll try you just kind of like want to shove there's like a little lip on these clasps you just want to shove the yarn in there and then clip it and you just want to go around and do that to the whole thing you can use straight pins too i'm sure but all i had was these clips and you just clip it in there so it's nice and see how it i mean it can be a little tight but that's okay if you need a little extra, you can always adjust it to make it work. And sometimes little clips will pop off and you have to put them back on. But as you can see, I'm just kind of like taking my nail and like trying to shove the lip, the edge of the... I can do this. I don't know if I can teach it well, but we're going to try. And then we just go to this side and we do the same, same thing. We just kind of stuff it in there, take our clip, clip it on. Adjust it around so it's even. And then after we get it all clipped up, get it all clipped up, we can take off these center ones. We can kind of close it and then we can, I'm going to show you a little trick for this to make it look actually, you know, decent, but yeah. So then you just keep your little clips. I like, I'm telling you when it comes to these clips, to keep it clipped to it <laughs> it's very helpful but now it's just time to start sewing so i'm going to show you how to get started on that i'm not going to do it because it'll take me so long to actually sew the whole thing in so i'll show you how i get started on it and how you will do it and then we'll i'll finish it up and i'll come back and i'll show you how to take care of all this stuff in here and how to and then we'll be done <laughs> so okay we're gonna get started on the sewing part and again yeah, 
It's not my favorite part, and it's like the, the part I'm most nervous about. So, this little sewing kit, like I said, I'll leave a link to it in the description below the video. Um, yeah, it comes with all these really cool needles. The first one I did, I tried this circular one. It worked really well, but it was too hard to maneuver because it's, I don't know, you gotta push kind of hard and I don't know, it just didn't work out for me, but you can try any kind you like. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and use this yarn because, or this yarn, this thread because it's already open. So you wanna take a decent size, a decent length of yarn, of yarn, of thread. It's late guys, I'm tired, but that's okay. We're gonna get through this. All right. And what I do is because I'm, again, I can't em emphasize this enough. I am not good at sewing. So if you're good at sewing, this should be good for you. But I'm also half blind, but that's okay. Cause I can still thread a needle kind of. Okay. Thread your needle, all that good stuff. But if you're good at sewing, you should have no problems with this. I'm bad at it. And this is like the part that I'm most nervous about. Okay. And I'm probably doing this wrong. So you can call me out on my sewing skills. It's perfectly fine because I'm not good at it. I'm just honest. I'm making a knot at the end of my thread. So, okay, good enough. I have my little knot at the end of my thread and now the fun begins. Okay, let's, let, let me show you what we got going here. We're gonna keep this clip in the middle. We're gonna take this one off. We're gonna find that first, the first hole next to the center hinge right there. And you wanna go in from the inside and you wanna kinda go down a little bit because you want this yarn to be tucked inside this lip. So you kinda wanna go down on your work a little and I don't know if I grabbed the right needle. I probably didn't. There's one needle that does not fit and anyways, okay, so we'll see if it fits. You want to go and you want to try to find, you got to put it through that hole, that hole right there. And this is, this is where it takes, takes some time because finding that hole is not the easiest thing to do. Okay, I found the hole and you want to wiggle it up. Make sure you don't get caught on anything. Okay, we found the hole. We are in. Now you wanna to go to the hole next to it. And you wanna kinda of angle your needle like down into the hole. So you, you kinda of wanna make sure that you grab enough of your project of the, you know, of the bag part, the coin purse part, and then pull your yarn. Now you wanna go right back through that same hole you just went through, but you don't wanna go through the same spot. So you kinda, like here's where my yarn's coming out. You wanna go kind of below it a little bit and find that hole, push it through, bring it up. Don't get caught on anything. Give it a nice tug and then go into the hole next to it. Again, Every once in a while, you want to make sure everything is nice and tucked in. Oh, look, see, I got caught. Okay, see, that would have been bad. Okay, now we can go into that hole. So we're going to go into the hole next to it. Again, make sure everything is tucked up in there. And then we're just going to go into that next hole. Again, kind of point down a little bit. You wanna make sure you grab enough material. Wiggle it through. Make sure you don't get caught on anything. Now you wanna go through the same hole you just went through, but you wanna go a little bit below where the thread is coming out, just so you don't go through the same exact Hole of the thread because then you would undo your stitch and I've done that and it's not no fun but this is probably my least favorite part just because 
it is so hard to find the hole and then to push the needle through. I just don't like sewing, I guess. And then you wiggle it through. Okay. So that's what you want to do all the way, all the way around. We came back out that same hole. Now we want to go in to the next hole. You can remove that clip if it's in your way. And if you don't have a clip, you can use straight pins or something, but it's so much easier when you have it all clipped together. And then you just go back through that hole or through the next hole. Make sure your thread is nice and tight, neat. And then you wanna go through that same hole you just went through, but you wanna go a little bit below where your thread's coming out so you can struggle to find the hole. <laughs> mm, isn't this fun, guys? This is so much fun. Okay, this is sad. This is just depressing at this point because I can't, I can't find the hole, guys. <laughs> All right, there we go, we got it. Make sure your thread does not get caught on anything. Cool. And then you're gonna go into the next hole. Again, see how it kind of popped out? The material kind of popped out. You wanna make sure you're really getting that in there. Having nails helps. If you don't have long nails and use the clip, use something. Push that through. And this is what you want to do until you get, getting stuck on everything, until you get all the way across to the next hinge. And then when I get to the next hinge, when I get all the way across here, it would take me forever to do that on camera because I can't find the darn holes. So when I get over here, I will, I'll come back and I'll show you what to do next. So hold, hold on. Okay, so. I finished up all the way around till I got to here. So I did all that. So now what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna stop here. I'm gonna knot off. I'm gonna make a knot, finish here, and then I'm gonna pick up again on this side, all brand new to get to here. But I'm not gonna, because I don't know, I don't know how to do that. So if you are, like I said, if you're good at sewing, you probably will have no problems with figuring out how to sew this thing on. But I, I'm not, I, I'm not good at it. So we're just gonna wing it. I'm gonna do it probably wrong, but that's okay. It's been working for me. I'm gonna make a couple more. I'm gonna go through this one one more time just to kind of like, I don't know, enforce it. And again, I still have troubles finding, finding the hole. So that's what I'm doing. Actually, what I'll do is this. Normally I would, but because I am trying to just get this video done, you guys don't need to see me struggle. I mean, it's bad enough that I am struggling, but that's okay. And I'm doing this wrong also, so do not do what I do when I'm doing this, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Because like I said, I'm not good at this. So I'm not good at the sewing part. So I'm just making a bunch of knots, really, is what I'm doing here. Making a bunch of knots, and then I'm just gonna take and take this needle here, kind of go down into this thing, pull that down a little bit, kind of hide it. I don't know, I was thinking about sewing in like a liner, like a fabric liner, and uh, yeah, so there's that side. So I'm just gonna go ahead and cut that off. I'll, I'll fix, I'll figure out a way to fix this part later to hide it. Maybe I'll stuff it in there. I don't know, there, I, can, I can find ways to hide stuff. So no one will ever know, but yeah. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same thing, starting over here. I'm gonna start the same exact way, make a knot, get some new thread, and make a new knot, and then same thing we started over here. We're gonna do on this side until we get to here, 
knot off and then it'll be almost completed. Is this the best tutorial ever? Of course, it's probably not, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew this side on and then I'll be back to show you how to finish it up and we will have completed our little coin purse. So give me one more second. Okay, so I made my way all the way over here and I knotted, I knotted off. Again, I am not one to teach you how to sew. I can teach you how to knit, I'm, I can't teach you how to sew. So yeah, you might need to, another tutorial for the, the sewing, but this is what it looks like so far just like that but this is what I've been doing is because if you spread this completely out like it was supposed to be like you might like you might like that look like it's not that bad it's not nearly zoom out a bit it's not that bad but I've liked it recently like when I've done it, I've folded inside out and I have all this and what I've been doing is you can either sew you can either sew the corners down like so, or you can just do what I've been doing because I'm not a fan of sewing. So I've just been tying it in like a loose knot and calling it good and just making a couple knots. And because it's on the inside, who's gonna see? I mean, it ain't, it ain't pretty. You could if you wanted to, I guess you could, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we can do here. Oops, jiggling the camera, cut off some excess, grab our yarn needle back up. If I can find it, here it is. Okay, you could take your yarn needle, I suppose. You could do this. I did not do this. I just cut the these, these strands off short. But you could, I guess, come in and weave in the ends so they're not like you know sticking out looking you could you could do that if you wanted to but you don't you don't have to you can just you can just cut them off that's what I've been doing I'm a fan of that so I am but after you get all that and you get it tie your sides together put it in and then you can manipulate it the way you like it and just play with it until it becomes a shape that you like I don't know that's how I've been doing it am I doing it wrong maybe does it still function it sure does so is it really wrong no it's not it's just different it's not how everyone else does it. That's all. Doesn't mean that it's wrong. So yeah, that, that's how I do it. That's how I've made all these pretty coin purses. So that was my video. That was my tutorial on how to make a coin purse. I hope it wasn't too confusing. I really, I hope it wasn't too confusing for you guys. I have fun making them. I hope you guys try it. Again, I will leave the pattern in the description below. I will leave links to everything I used here except for the yarn. Um, you can use any bulky yarn you want or experiment with worsted weight yarn. See what works. And that's it. So if you like today's video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't yet subscribed, please, please do that because that helps. And leave me a comment. Let me know if I should do more sewing tutorials or not. That, that was a joke. I, I shouldn't do sewing tutorials. Okay, guys, until next time, until the next video, I will, I will see you. I will see you next video. Okay, bye.